Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 5 starts now. And we're going to begin tonight with the weather. Exact Track 4D lit up this hour as rain and snow are moving through Metro Detroit. We've got some winter weather advisories, in fact, just to the north of us. Let's get right yeah. over to Kim Adams off the top here at 5. And Kim, it's changing over from rain to snow in a lot of places. It is in a lot of places, especially west and north of the city of Detroit. But the city of Detroit right now is still seeing rain. We've got an urban heat island effect, so that keeps things a little bit warmer. And also the temperature coming off Lake Erie, keeping it just rain for Monroe as well. But there is a line where we mix with some wet snowflakes, and that line goes through Harper Woods over to Hamtramck. In Detroit, it's just rain. In Gross Point, Gross Point. Park, it's raining, but Gross Point Woods has that mix. Uh, Dearborn raining right now as well. We'll slide a little bit further to the west, a little light snow in Farmington Hills, West Bloomfield, also Northville, Plymouth, and Livonia. But then you get into Taylor, Southgate, and Riverview, and it's all rain. We will see this change over to mostly snow here in the next couple of hours and overnight tonight. Not expecting a lot in the way of accumulation unless you head up to the thumb where they're expecting about two to three inches. So there is a winter weather advisory. Again, it's not for our immediate area. We will likely not go under a winter weather advisory. This is mostly to the north as we expect uh, an inch or less on the grassy areas here in Metro Detroit. I'll have more on your forecast plus a look at a cold weekend ahead in just a few minutes. All right, Kim, and when you wake up, be sure to tune into Local 4 News from 4.30 to 7 a.m. for the latest on the forewarned forecast. And for any hang-ups there might be with the commute, you get a little bit later start, then make sure you tune in at 7 a.m. on Local 4 Plus. All right, now breaking news on Detroit's west side. That's where Detroit police opened fire on a suspect following a short chase. This is happening right now on Joy Road and Strathmore, not far from Hubble. Mara McDonald is there live tonight. Mara, what can you tell us? Kimberly, let me emphasize that all the information we're getting right now from the chief is very preliminary. That said, take a look behind me. You can see this is where the scene is. Per the chief, DPD officers were on regular patrol. They spotted a vehicle that they said had an improper plate on it. They went to pull it over. That's when things got tense. They say that at least one person inside that vehicle jumped out and ran. Officers gave chase and then shots were fired. It is unclear whether that suspect they were chasing shot at them or merely officers shot at the suspect. But that person has been shot in the leg, has been taken to a local hospital. The chief updated us just moments ago. Take a listen. We recovered a weapon and a mask, uh, one handgun, one ski mask uh, at the location. Uh, and right now we're looking at uh, if he fired at us. Our supervisor responded to a shot fired run uh, in progress. And I don't know at this point if it was shot fired by the perpetrator to our officers or, or what, but we do know uh, that uh, we have one person shot in the leg. Back here live, DPD just putting out this bulletin moments ago that says they are looking for a Chevy model unknown in connection with all of this. License plate E is in Edward, L is in Larry, Y is in uh, Young, and then the number is 6819. So we clearly need some more information from DPD, but a lot happened out here in a short period of time. One person has been taken to the hospital, shot by police in the leg. We're live on Detroit's west side. I'm Mara McDonald, Local 4. Okay, Mara, thank you. Our other top story tonight, the Oakland County prosecutor is going to see life without parole for Oxford school shooter Ethan Crumbly. Last month, Crumbly pleaded guilty to all 24 charges against him, including murder of four of his fellow students, also a charge of terrorism. Jacqueline Francis live tonight. And Jacqueline, it's not a done deal, though, is it? It's far from a done deal, but legal experts do say it's a significant step, especially coming from a prosecutor who's dedicated much of her career to juvenile justice reform. It's not surprising that in a case of this significance and this magnitude with this many deaths and this amount of horror and terror that the prosecutor would seek life imprisonment. Legal expert Neil Rockhind is reacting to the latest development in the Oxford High School shooting. Oakland County Prosecutor Karen McDonald's office seeking life in prison without parole for 16-year-old Ethan Crumley, who killed four fellow students nearly one year ago. A first-degree murder conviction typically brings an automatic life sentence in Michigan. 
But teenagers are entitled to a hearing where their lawyers can raise mental health and other issues to argue for a shorter term. The chief assistant prosecutor releasing a statement saying in part, quote, there have been no plea bargains, no charge reductions, and no sentence agreements. The shooter has been offered and promised nothing. The motion filed yesterday is a formal declaration of our intent to seek the maximum possible sentence in this case. Legal experts say this move is very telling coming from a prosecutor who ran on juvenile justice reform. This may be the one case where criminal justice reformers look at it and say, we can't, even though we believe that 16 and 17 and 18 year olds can be reformed and be rehabilitated, in this particular case, given the gravity of the conduct, given everything Ethan Crumley has done, he simply cannot be rehabilitated. It's up to a judge to decide what sentence Crumley will get, and that process is expected to begin in February. Uh, Jacqueline, we heard anything from Crumley's attorneys yet? I just heard back from Crumley's attorney within the last hour. She says that this latest development is disappointing, but not surprising given the nature of the offense. Yeah. She went on to say that she believes this upcoming hearing will give the court and the public a good inside look to the challenges Crumley was facing at home. So it's safe to say there's a lot more to this story that's still, still to come. Yeah, no doubt. All right, Jacqueline. Well, the U.S. is looking into reports that a Russian missile crossed into Poland today, killing two people. Poland is a NATO member, and top leaders in the country now say they're holding an emergency meeting. The U.S. State Department says they're working to confirm exactly what happened. Ukraine says Russia launched 85 missiles today, many targeting energy infrastructure. It caused widespread blackouts in very populated areas. Also here at 5, a man from Westland has been charged by federal prosecutors for trying to help ISIS. The indictment says Aus Mohammed Nasser spent years trying to help the terrorist group, and that's not all. Victor Williams live tonight with the charges, and Victor, you were in court as he made his first appearance. Yes, that is correct, Kimberly and Devin. This case is being investigated by the FBI's Joint Terrorism Task Force and goes all the way back to 2011. 34-year-old Aus Mohammed Nasser has been charged with attempting to provide resources to a foreign terrorist organization, along with being a felon in possession of a destructive device. Here's a mugshot from when he was previously booked for armed robbery. We know his last known address was at this home in Westland. Nasser is accused of recruiting to provide support material, including personnel in the form of himself to ISIS from December of 2011 through October of 2017. The 34-year-old has landed himself in even more hot water being a convicted felon that's accused of having a destructive device. It's alleged that back in October of 2017, he knowingly possessed said device or the combination of parts intended for the creation of a destructive device. Although the indictment doesn't go into what that device was, Nasser faces up to 20 years in prison for attempting to support ISIS and up to 15 years behind bars for possessing the destructive device. Today, he pled not guilty and was not given bond. This will likely be the beginning of a long, drawn-out case, so of course, we'll keep you updated. Victor Williams, Local 4. Okay, Victor, thanks. Former President Trump is expected to announce his third campaign for the White House tonight. In Washington, the focus right now steering towards the 2024 presidential election with the results of the 2022 midterms starting to settle into place. Alice Barr is on Capitol Hill with the latest. Alice. Good evening. These midterm elections did not go as predicted, and already many people are looking for signs of what's to come in 2024. Newly elected members of Congress gathered on the steps of the U.S. Capitol today, standing shoulder to shoulder despite deep partisan divisions. Control of the House of Representatives on the cusp of being called, with Republicans favored to take a very slim majority. Democrats celebrating success in holding control of the Senate as Congress did not see a predicted red wave, leading to rancor within the Republican Party and questions over who will hold leadership roles. Some pointing the blame at the GOP's biggest name, former President Trump, who backed many of the party's losing candidates, including Carrie Lake, who narrowly lost her bid for Arizona governor overnight. I'm going to be making a very big announcement. The former president preparing for a major announcement tonight, widely expected to kick off his 2024 presidential run. But recent polls show him trailing Florida Governor Ron DeSantis in a head-to-head -head matchup. 
This is the first time we've seen Trump trailing other Republicans since the early days of his primaries in 2016. DeSantis, who has yet to announce his presidential plans, pitching his landslide victory for governor as a roadmap for Republican success. Florida, I think, really shows the blueprint. While potential rivals emerge, President Biden meeting with world leaders at the G20 summit in Indonesia, feeling emboldened by Democrats' better than expected midterm results, even as some members of his own party question whether he's up for a second term. The president saying he intends to run again and plans to make a final decision early next year. As former President Trump geared up for his announcement and a potential rematch of the 2020 election, he's still facing several investigations regarding that election as well as his business dealings. Just yesterday, he defied a subpoena to testify before the House January 6th committee. In Washington, Alice Barr, Local 4.